I'm Eleanor Shadroff, and I'll be presenting on behalf of my co-authors, Leah Bradshaw and Vincent Hughes. Our talk is titled Investigating the Forensic Applications of Global and Local Temporal Representations of Speech for Dialect Discrimination. It is a bit of a mouthful, but hopefully we'll be able to unpack that over the course of the talk. So in forensic phonetics, there are two important types of tasks. One is voice analysis, uh, in which a forensic linguist may be asked to describe the characteristics of a speaker's voice, or even the speaker themselves, on the basis of their voice. And a second type of task is voice comparison, which may involve speaker recognition or identification. An important step that frequently accompanies um, both types of tasks is speaker classification. And this is the process of determining speaker-specific features like gender, age, dialect, idiosyncratic features of a person's voice, um, using auditory analysis, acoustic phonetic analysis, and possibly also automatic speaker recognition approaches. So um, in an acoustic phonetic analysis for forensic purposes, measures like vowel formants, F0, and voice onset time are frequently employed. These happen to be court presentable, meaning they can be explained to and understood by a jury, and they also happen to focus almost entirely on segmental information. So what is happening with the individual speech sounds of a speaker's voice, um, or of a speaker's speech. But this raises the important question, what about super segmental information, and specifically information about a speaker's rhythmic pattern? So some studies have indeed demonstrated that measures of rhythm can be useful in dialect discrimination and even for forensic purposes. The application of rhythm in phonetic research and especially, uh, especially phonetic casework has been limited, uh, but I do want to emphasize that there has been a growing push for its importance in forensic phonetics. So why has rhythm been difficult to put into practice? Um, if we think about it, rhythm reflects temporal characteristics of a spoken utterance, and figuring out how to represent time and speech is not a simple process. How can or really ha how have temporal characteristics of a spoken utterance been represented in previous analyses, whether in acoustic phonetic analysis or automatic approaches to speaker recognition? So there are two main types of temporal representation in the literature. One which might intuitively represent what we consider to be rhythm a little bit better. So these are the global temporal representations of speech, which reflect long-term alternations in vocalic and consonantal intervals. And this may approximate the rhythm, rhythmic pattern of speech. Um, global temporal properties are useful for describing and discriminating speakers and dialects at the acoustic phonetic level. Um, there has been some research on that. And they can also improve automatic speaker recognition systems. And again, there has been research, but it's just been a little bit limited in extent. Um, the type of global temporal representation that we consider here are rhythm metrics. And these are measures examining the degree of variability in the duration of pre-specified intervals, like all the vowels or all the consonants or adjacent intervals and so forth. So global temporal representations are frequently used to classify languages and dialects as either syllable or stress timed. Um, these are uh, common terms that have gone through a lot of discussion as to whether they are useful or not, but syllable time languages have relatively equal syllable durations, whereas stress time languages have relatively equal durations across stress syllables, but, like, but uh, more variability between stressed and unstressed syllables. So, while this distinction might be a good starting point for discussing rhythm, it um, can also be problematic as most languages don't fit nicely into one type or the other. So this distinction on its own is just a bit too coarse. Um, that will come up again later. So in contrast um, to global temporal representations, there are also very local temporal representations like delta and delta delta features. Uh, these reflect changes in spectral properties between adjacent temporal frames and also the acceleration of that change. And these are commonly the only temporal or temporal-like features in standard automatic speaker and language recognition systems. So the goals for this talk are to analyze the rhythmic profiles of four varieties of British English, 
Cambridge Multicultural London English, Leicester and Punjabi Leicester English. Two, to investigate the utility of global rhythm metrics or RMs for discriminating among these dialects. And then three, we want to compare the performance of global and local temporal representations for dialect discrimination. So basically, is rhythm useful in dialect discrimination, which is useful for speaker classification? And how much are automatic speaker recognition systems that don't have additional global temporal representations missing out without this global representation? So first, I'm going to um, discuss the speech corpora we used for our experiments, then describe the methods and results for analysis of the global rhythm metrics followed by the local delta and delta delta features in that experiment, and then conclude with a discussion of the results from the two experiments. So we used two red speech corpora for our analyses, uh, the Ivy corpus and a corpus collected by Jess Warmald at York for her dissertation. Each corpus happens to have two dialects so, um, that are kind of matched to one another. One is a one of the dialects is a non-contact or Anglo variety of English, and the second dialect is considered a contact variety of English. So the Ivy Corpus contains speech from 12 speakers of Cambridge English and 12 speakers of Multicultural London English, or MLE, who are of Caribbean descent. Uh, these speakers were all around the age of 16. Um, the Corpus from Wormald 2016 contains speech from eight Leicester English speakers and 22 Punjabi Leicester English speakers, where at least one of their parents was a native speaker of Punjabi. Um, so these are both red speech corpora. Um, the Leicester corpus is a little bit unbalanced, but uh, so is the nature of working with speech corpora. All right, so um, moving on to our analysis of the global rhythm metrics. Uh, first, I'm going to briefly review the six rhythm metrics we considered for our analysis. So the first three are the standard deviation of the vocalic interval durations the standard deviation of the consonant interval durations, and then the and then Barco V, which is the coefficient of variation for the vocalic interval durations. Uh, so these measures get at just how much overall variability there is in the durations of these intervals. So are they consistently timed or is there a lot of variability between them? The next three measures are the pairwise variability indices for vocalic interval durations, consonant interval durations, and then the summed consonantal and vocalic interval durations. Uh, and these measures capture how much variability there is between adjacent intervals. So is there a lot of um, interval to interval fluctuation in the durations, or are they relatively stable in duration from interval to interval? Um, so to prep the speech files, we use the Prot Easy Align tool for British English to obtain phone level alignments on the Ivy corpus, and then we manually corrected all intervals, or I should say Leah manually corrected all intervals and did a great job. Um, the Lester data was already phone aligned, um, and then the consonant and vowel intervals were just determined based on the phone alignments, and the rhythm metrics were extracted using Volker Delvo's duration analyzer script. So first I'm going to present an overview of the results for each of our RMs, rhythm metrics, and each dialect. Uh, we z-scored all the values just for a visual comparison here. Um, and then for each rhythm metric, uh, we fit a linear regression model with predictors of dialect and gender. Um, so it wasn't a mixed effects model because there's only one measure for each speaker, each audio file, and therefore speaker. Uh, so you can't really throw in a random effect for speaker. Um, but in all cases, dialects significantly improved the model fit. And interestingly, there were no significant gender differences that emerged within the models. Um, but I am going to um, go into detail about uh, what happened between the dialects in each of these rhythm metrics. I've actually created two groups of the RMs just based on uh, the patterns of results. So in the first group of RMs, we have the standard deviation of vocalic interval durations, VARCO V and NPVI CV, so the pairwise variability index of some CV intervals. For these measures, Cambridge speakers were significantly higher than the average production among these four dialects, perhaps suggesting a more stress timed interpretation. So there was a lot of variability in the vowel durations and also between directly adjacent syllable like units. MLE speakers were actually pretty average on these measures. Leicester speakers were higher on VARCO V. 
And Punjabi Leicester speakers had significantly lower uh, standard deviations for vowel duration and bark OV, suggesting a more syllable time interpretation, so less variability between uh, across the vowels. In the second group of RMs, we have the standard deviation of consonant interval durations and the pairwise variability indices for vowels and consonants. MLE speakers really pop out here with significantly lower standard deviations for consonant duration and less variability in durations between successive vowels and successive consonants. So we could interpret this as being more syllable timed. Again, there's less variability from a syllable from one syllable portion to the next syllable portion. Um, and recall that Punjabi Leicester English also had a more syllable timed interpretation in the previous slide. But the source of that was primarily in the low variability in just the vowel durations. MLE differs from, from Punjabi Leicester in the variability of consonant durations. Uh, Cambridge speakers also had a significantly smaller standard deviation for consonants. And Leicester English had significantly higher variability in consonant durations and between successive vowel durations and between successive CV sequences. So these suggest a more stress-timed interpretation, which is um, similar to how we interpreted Cambridge English on the previous slide. But again, there's a difference in the source of this interpretation. At a really broad level, Cambridge has more variability in vowel durations, uh, period, whereas Leicester has more variability in constant duration and successive vowel durations. So we then submitted the rhythm profiles for each speaker to a K-means cluster analysis to investigate how well dialects could be distinguished on the basis of rhythm. Overall, the RMs weren't half bad in distinguishing dialects. So we can see that the upper left cluster primarily has all the Cambridge speakers in it. The upper right cluster is a bit more mixed, but mainly between MLE and Punjabi Leicester speakers, so the contact varieties. And the bottom clusters are also a little bit mixed, but only contain speakers from Leicester. So either Leicester uh, anglo Leicester dialect or Punjabi Leicester. Um, so the primary dimensions of variability are pretty interpretable. So dimension one seems to reflect the Anglo versus contact variety difference, with Anglo varieties a little bit better represented on the left-hand side and contact varieties on the right-hand side. Dimension two seems to reflect perhaps that regional difference, though we do want to point out there is a compound with corpus here. So we did try and use normalized measures to overcome that. In any case, the Leicester speakers are on the bottom and the Cambridge and London speakers, like the so-called South speakers, are on top. So the rhythm metrics definitely carry some useful dialectal information. We can now compare this with the other commonly used temporal representation of speech, at least the one employed in automatic system, namely the delta and delta-delta features. So to extract these features, uh, we first obtained the MFCCs within the 0 to 4,000 hertz range, uh, from 20 millisecond frames, each shifted by 10 milliseconds, and only portions of the file containing speech were analyzed, so all silent intervals were removed. Uh, captural mean and variance normalization was applied to correct for room and equipment differences, and also just to mimic the standard process in speech and speaker recognition systems. The deltas were then derived from the change between MFCCs in adjacent frames, and the delta deltas as the change between deltas in adjacent vectors. So these were then averaged for each recording, and following our global rhythm metrics experiment, we submitted these to a k-means cluster analysis to assess how well we were able to group speakers of the same dialect. So overall, the performance of the local temporal representations was worse than that of the global temporal representations. So as you can see, most speakers were thrown into cluster three. So here we just told the system to um, use four clusters in the hopes that they would match up to dialects. But as you can see, they don't really match up to what we can recognize as dialects. Um, so yeah, most speakers were thrown into cluster three and the primary, di uh, the primary dimensions of variability are not readily interpretable or even particularly useful. So overall, there were significant differences in the rhythm metrics among the four British English dialects we looked at here. Uh, as expected, the Anglo varieties, Cambridge English and Leicester English, were more stress timed, um, but in slightly different ways from one another. So they had, they sort of, sort of showed the stress timing using different rhythm metrics. Um, 
MLE and Punjabi Lester English were also more syllable timed, but again in different ways from one another. So altogether, this suggests that the combination of rhythm metrics could be used um, fruitfully as a rhythmic profile of the language. So it turns out that that rhythmic profile, those six RMs together, is useful in dialect discrimination, as we saw with the K-means uh, cluster analysis. One issue, though, is that the RMs are somewhat correlated with one another. So in the future, it would be great to see which RMs and combinations of RMs are indeed best and least redundant with each other. We're certainly open to suggestions on how to overcome that. Um, and then it would also be good to examine whether these results hold for dialects collected in a single corpus. So one of the other big things we were dealing with was that we were getting our speech from two different corpora. These results also show a proof of concept. Global temporal representations are more useful for dialect discrimination than local temporal representations. And this demonstrates a need for global temporal representations in automatic speaker and language recognition systems. Some work on this has been done already, uh, but this demonstrates that there's really useful information in these global measures that may uh, better approximate what we intuitively think of as rhythm. Um, and finally, the rhythm metrics, the, the acoustic phonetic rhythm metrics also have forensic applicability. These are directly interpretable and should therefore be more presentable. So that's all for the talk. Thank you so much for listening. And many thanks to Jess Wormov, Paul Fouts, Peter French, and Sam Helmuth for their help along the way.